Back to the phones we go. You're on The Conspiracy Show. Hello, welcome. Hey, Richard, thanks for taking my call. Is it me or does it seem like there are a lot of ex-military uh, folk coming out with UFO stories that they're only able to tell right now? The duty controller pointed out there were two UFOs that hovered at the end of the runway and I scrambled the jet fighters after these UFOs. They flew away at tremendous speed and they ended up they was hovered all over the Pacific, several miles west of Vancouver. UFOs, very real. They've been coming here for a long, long time. Clearly, the UFO phenomenon is taking place. Why is our government lying to the American people? I'll get the people lined up, the, the researchers, the experts, the top people in the field, and we'll try to get to the bottom of this. Welcome to The Conspiracy Show. My name is Richard Serrett. According to a United Nations report, since 1947, 150 million people worldwide have reported seeing a UFO. And according to a Roper poll conducted in the United States, 70% of Americans believe the government is lying to them about UFOs and ETs. Are we being lied to about UFOs? And if so, who is responsible for keeping the lid on this secret? Perhaps most importantly, what are they keeping hidden from us? I'm going to attempt to get the answers to these questions from some of the top UFO disclosure advocates in the world, including an historian and a former Canadian Minister of Defense. Friends, it is time to rudely engage reality. Genetic enigma or a human alien hybrid? That's how cynical I am now about the process. Is this dream possible technology in the tower weather or is created by the corporation? It has been engineered by the Illuminati. Victor Vigiani is the media director for Exopolitics Canada and a longtime UFO disclosure advocate. Thanks for this, Victor. Great to be with you, Richard. Fantastic. Economic crisis, depression. So what is your best evidence we're being lied to about UFOs? Oh, getting, getting really provocative right off the top, huh? Yeah, uh, geez, that's a really good question. The best evidence, and you take a look at what evidence means, evidence really means that uh, it brings closure to an argument. It provides something, a foundation upon which you can say, well, let's dismiss the question mark. And when you take a look at it from that point of view, the best evidence that we have, we feel, is that there is a real phenomenon going on out there. UFOs are a real, tangible phenomenon. They exhibit in the sky maneuverability far beyond any technology that we have, luminosity beyond any technology that we have. And just from the point of view of what we're seeing in the sky, the definite opinion is, and the evidence, is that this thing is real. And uh, there's no question about it. Rochester, New York. I'm here to get some answers. Is there any documented proof that the government or the military are aware of and concerned about UFOs? There's one man I'm pretty certain who can shed some light. What specific document would you point to as proof that governments are lying to us about UFOs or that they are tracking UFOs? Once the late 1970s were upon us, we citizens of the world had access to proof, not evidence, that the United States government had been and continued and has continued to lie about UFOs. And that, that proof is in the form of government documents released through the Freedom of Information Act. If you take the top 100 of those documents, you've got a great case to show that this was a problem that has engaged the United States military over and over again, because what the documents told us is that UFOs have been invading sensitive airspace of American military installations and scientific installations, that we were sending jet fighters up to intercept these things, that we were tracking them on radar, that the military hierarchy was concerned. All the while, they were telling the public that there was nothing to this, we suddenly learned there was a lot to this. So to me, that is absolute proof of government lying. Among researchers, it's well known, the 1947 Twining Memo. Uh, general Nathan Twining was a three-star general. He later became a four-star general chief of staff of the Air Force. Twining wrote a classified memo to another general. And what Twining said is that the military reports we're getting in here tell us 
that the reported phenomenon is real, not visionary or fictitious, was one of the phrases. And he went on to describe the particular qualities of these uh, reports, uh, describing the objects. And the consequences are enormous. So enormous that the future of the world as a hospitable habitat for the human species is currently at stake. You mentioned the government. So is, is it the government that's ultimately responsible for deceiving the public? Well, when you say government, uh, it's in, a, in a sense, it's a misnomer. When, government, when you think of government, you talk about elected officials. I would venture to say that most elected officials have no idea what's going on. What we're talking about is a substructure within the government, the intelligence agencies, the long-standing individuals who've been around a long, long time, or the ones that take over the intelligence agencies who are given this information by their predecessors regarding UFOs and extraterrestrial existence and the presence. You're about to hear some absolutely startling claims from a former high-ranking cabinet minister in the Canadian government about UFOs and extraterrestrials. The Honourable Paul Hellyer has always been a political maverick and a bit of an outsider. I wanted to try and find out how much governments know and who, ultimately, is responsible for this truth embargo. And I needed to hear it from someone who worked inside government at the highest level. When you were Minister of Defense, did you ever suspect, and we're talking about the, the early to, to, to mid-60s here, did you ever suspect that the government, perhaps your government, was keeping information about UFOs from the public? Oh, absolutely not. No clue. Not a bit. What led you to speak out publicly in September 2005 about, about UFOs? The process was really that uh, a chap by the name of Pierre Junot, he sent me a book called The, the Day After Roswell by Colonel Philip Corso. And uh, I found it quite compelling, actually. There were, there were so many witnesses, live witnesses, of what people had seen and, uh, and their experience that I thought, this is, this is not make-believe. And he said, you know, I called the general and told him the book that you were writing. And he said, every word is true and more. And by the time I finished the book, I was convinced that disclosure was essential, not only for the good of the United States, but for the good of the world. So that's when I decided to go public. But before I did, I, um, I asked the general a heads up that I would like to have a word with him. So I called him, and again, even before I could get my mouth open, he said, every word of it is true and more. And he said, uh, there have been face-to-face um, -face discussions between officials in the United States and the aliens, period. We're here at the Center for Inquiry in Toronto to speak to a skeptic who's not convinced by the reams of declassified documents or the millions of eyewitnesses that UFOs are real or that we're being lied to. I actually saw some of his more public um, lectures and that sort of thing, and I just find them really quite fanciful. I mean, and also, this is another example of a second-hand account. I mean, we don't know who this decorated general is, or if he even exists. Like, I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to talk to the people that actually that actually saw this. Even though Hellier is obviously um, has a a, a, a very uh, prestigious background, this doesn't make him an expert in 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 either uh, differentiating UFOs from natural explanations of lights in the sky. Nor does it make him an expert in in differentiating truth from lies. Quite frankly. UFO researcher and historian Richard Dolan points to the famous Nathan Twining memo as proof that the U.S. government and military are A, concerned about UFOs, and B, are tracking UFOs. What do you make of the Twining memo? I mean, I looked into this memo in detail, and I read the, the end of the memo. Uh, the, the part that's often quoted in the media just goes to A through D, but there's actually an F and an H, which I thought was, was also interesting. F stated, it is possibly within the present U.S. knowledge, provided extensive detailed development is undertaken to construct a piloted aircraft 
which has the general description of the object that he had described. And then in H, he says that due consideration must be given to the following. One, the possibility that the object could be of domestic origin. So even in his own memo, he is hedging his bets and he is somewhat skeptical of, of you know, he's saying we should investigate this, but he is acknowledging, uh, let's not jump the gun here. But wouldn't you think it odd that the commanding general of the U.S. Air Force and, and later the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff would be unaware of some domestic aircraft that was capable of these types of maneuvers? I'm not sure how high up Twining was in command, but based on lots of reports that I've been reading, I do get the impression that there were competing military interests and that in some cases, um, you know, individuals would actually tell certain commanding officers not to tell their supervisor what they were involved with or what they had seen, which suggests to me that there could have very well been secret military projects that only some groups in the military, the military is a huge outfit, that some groups in the military were engaged in that others were not aware of. Let's say they discover anti-gravity, something that they can't even share with the world because they'd, they would take down the petroleum industry, probably. Let's recap. 150 million people have seen UFOs, but officially, the government doesn't want to talk about it. Yet we have documents proving the government knows about UFOs, talks about UFOs, and is concerned about UFOs. The military has ordered its jet fighters to intercept UFOs. But why can't the government disclose? Maybe they can't. Maybe there is some shadow government outside or above the government that's running the show. We just heard from a former high-ranking cabinet minister in the Canadian government who has confirmed that. What is it that the government is hiding from the public regarding the UFO phenomenon? In the United States, it is also what they have called a shadow government, which is a government within a government. And within the shadow government, there is what I call in my book, Light like at the End of the Tunnel, a cabal. And the cabal are the hardcore of the shadow government. So this is, uh, you know, this is a, a really tough worldwide oligarchy that is uh, in charge of things and uh, really pulling the strings. And the consequences are enormous. So enormous that the future of the world as a hospitable habitat for the human species is currently at stake. Conspiracy theorists in this area tend to see the government, give them too much credit, they see the government as being one monolithic entity capable of commanding people to the orthodox view that, that this single entity uh, dominates. In fact, with, even internally within the government and the military's own circles, there have been controversies and dissensions, and that shows how, how human the, the actual process of investigation has been within the military circles. And I think it suggests, more to the point, the military has done a, a fairly good job of actually trying to thoroughly look into these claims. And I do believe that this small cabal has in concert with um, visitors from other places developed clean energy, exotic energy, presumably both uh, zero-point energy and cold fusion energy. We're near the Rubicon as far as the future of the world is concerned, and if we keep on burning fossil fuels for the 30 or 40 years that our political leaders are talking about before they really do something, it's game over. These intelligence groups, the shadow government, how far are they willing to go to keep a lid on the truth? Will they murder? Yes. How do you know? We have some information that some former intelligence people have had their lives threatened and in fact have been found in rivers. Because they were threatening to go public. Wanting to go public or having information that they were going to begin to disseminate regarding this to create a public discourse on it. And uh, the government has gone that far. We know that. One of the things that they don't want us to know is that they have some of the exotic technology belonging to these other people, beings, creatures, whatever they are. Let's say they discover anti-gravity to some extent. 
something that they can't even share with the world because they'd, they would take down the petroleum industry, probably. And why they're doing that is to eliminate any type of, um, I guess, chaos is one thing, because some of the information that we know um, could create a lot of chaos within society. That's the first point, because we're really not ready to receive this information yet, at least a lot of the population isn't. The second part about all of that is that um, the technologies that they do know about, and we're talking about anti-gravitic technologies, for example, that type of energy could displace fossil fuels permanently, and you have insurmountable social, industrial, and technological change on your hands, and how do you deal with it? And I think that's one of the reasons why they need to keep it a secret. So now they've got a real issue here in terms of guarding this technology and the scientific uh, revolutionary breakthroughs that, that go along with it. The thousands of sightings all over the world, the evidence that has backed up those sightings, the radars, the pilots, military and civil, the people who have worked in the underground uh, facilities in Nevada and Arizona who have agreed to testify as to what they did and saw. There is just so much evidence that one wonders how they can keep the lid on this uh, situation the, to the extent that they have. But the government will not formally acknowledge, A, the existence and reality of UFOs, and B, that these are of off-world origin. Millions of people have seen UFOs. Millions. Police, military officers, commercial airline pilots, politicians, a former governor, even a former president of the United States. These eyewitness testimonies cannot be so easily dismissed. And what about the hundreds of thousands heavily redacted, declassified government documents, which clearly show that governments around the world are concerned about UFOs, are tracking UFOs, and in some cases, have engaged UFOs. President Eisenhower was called away to visit uh, with a number of other individuals, um, alien representatives at an Air Force base in California. In the last decade, we've seen uh, military officers claiming that UFOs have neutralized missiles, and they're sending us a message about our nuclear arms proliferation. Again, there's a moral tone to this, so these are extremely um, psychologically uh, moving encounters, and I would never I would never take away the importance of these incidences. I'm very fascinated. I want to understand why people uh, have these experiences and, and, and what the truth is, what, whatever that happens to be. We have deathbed testimony from individuals who claim to have witnessed the crash of a UFO near Roswell in 1947, the recovery of the UFO crash debris, and alien bodies. Credible people risking derision, ridicule, and even the loss of a career to come forward to talk about UFOs. Why would anyone do that? We get information that they are, in effect, still treating the aliens, or some of them, at least, as as enemy and if that's true then the rumors that they're making weapons and based on the aliens own technology to shoot them down has some substance and these are these are tremendously important issues for all mankind all of this is what a trick of the mind a foggy memory an overactive imagination i'm sorry i don't buy it it's really not a secret but the government will not formally acknowledge A, the existence and reality of UFOs, and B, that these are of off-world origin. Those two things they'll never admit, although we're working hard to make them admit that. There's no need to overreach the argument. I'm not here to convince you that UFOs are piloted by extraterrestrials. There could be an earthly explanation. UFOs could be part of some covert military black ops experiment. Jimmy Carter had a deep interest in UFOs, and he went to the uh, senior person in the CIA, the head of the CIA at the time, George Bush Sr. And um, President Carter demanded information on UFOs. He wanted the files from the CIA on UFOs. And at that time, uh, George W. Bush Sr. said, Mr. President, you don't have a need to know. 
no, I'm not going to give you any information. So when you take a look at that kind of mindset, all we need to do is provide a substructure of information within the media, and it'll flow from that substructure through the media and into government and to the point where government officials themselves, the elected representatives, as we're trying to do right now, force the president to go and have an executive order signed and put in place that we shall look at this, this information. We shall have investigations into the reality of this without any way, shape, or form taking any direction from any of the intelligence agencies because in a democracy, we feel that the elected representatives are the ones to call the shots. Ultimately, now there's a lot of control by these military intelligence people, so they have a lot to say about whether or not that's going to happen. But I think eventually elected officials are going to be receiving information that, like a court of law, they just won't be able to dismiss it or ignore it anymore. For me, UFOs are real, and governments know more than they're letting on. The UFO phenomenon is worthy of greater scrutiny, and I pledge to follow the truth wherever it may lead. And now I'd like to know what you have to say. You can contact The Conspiracy Show through our website at www.theconspiracyshow.com. In the meantime, don't be afraid. There's nothing concealed that won't be revealed and nothing hidden that won't be made known. What I say in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in a whisper, proclaim from the housetops. Move over, Aphrodite. I'm coming home. Good night.